Welcome back to the Wolverine.com podcast, the video edition, and we are joined today by a really special guest. He's here with us throughout the basketball season and uh, and football as well. He's your play-by-play man for basketball, and uh, that would be one Brian Bush. Brian, welcome back to the podcast. Always good to be here, John. Thanks for having me. Uh, we enjoy getting you on when things are happening with basketball and and or football there's uh stuff to talk about on both those fronts but we want to focus first on basketball today because of the news that hunter dickinson is back and he is coming back for his junior year talk about what that means for juan howard and his crew yeah i mean it it means everything um to have a guy like hunter return to be um, the focal point of a program that, you know, has, let's face it. I mean, the expectations are to reach the second weekend of the NCAA tournament, at least they've done it five consecutive tournaments. Uh, So, I mean, he, I I think he goes into next season as the big 10 player of the year in preseason is the favorite to win that in the postseason. Um, And and the fact that, you know, he he told me uh, on on our podcast, defend the block that, you know, I, I didn't want the distraction um, I wanted to lock in on, you know, not going through the process again because I felt he said he, he's like, I, I'd feel like it was just kind of me, you know, I'd be going through the motions. I'd just be doing it just to do it. I, I, my heart wouldn't be completely in it. So, um, I mean, he, we all saw what he meant to the team last year. And that was as, you know, the, on him was increasing. He had to deal with double teams, triple teams. Uh, this wasn't his freshman season where he was able to operate a lot more frequently in one-on-one situations. Uh, so, listen, there's still plenty of room for him to grow in his game. I still think there is a you know a real path for him to, to in the NBA once he takes that step. Um, and also, I mean, I know it's not talked about a whole lot, and and I think it's important. I mean, he he told me that he's if things pan out well, he will be able to graduate in three years, and that. When you get that close and you're kind of on the fence about it, uh, when in doubt, get a Michigan degree, right? Like there, there's real value in that. That's not what we talk about a whole lot, and I get it, right? I mean, we're, we're locked in on the basketball side of things, but but I think that also is is one heck of a way to sway a young man like that who, you know, whether Hunter Dickinson plays one year in the NBA or, or 21 years in the NBA, uh, he's got a really bright future ahead of himself in whatever path he takes beyond basketball. Um, you know, maybe he goes to Phil Martelli, WWE heel one of these years. Uh, but you know, I mean, he, he having that degree is a, is a heck of a boost Forget the basketball side. So, uh, very understandable decision. Um, one that I don't think we would have ever, if we were doing this, you know, on April 28th, 2021, I don't think we ever would have thought that this was going to be a possibility, but, uh, times change NIL changes. Uh, but you know, the basketball and the, and the educational side certainly changed a bit too. Okay, well, you mentioned NIL. How much do you think um, that had to do with this or, or played into it, knowing that uh, these guys know that they can be a little bit comfortable on the on the fun side uh, as well as staying in school, getting that degree, perhaps in Hunter's case and preparing? Uh, that'd be one question. And, and the second one that uh, things you just talked about uh, what is it that you would think that he would most need to sh- demonstrate in the coming year to um, have NBA scouts more comfortable with him? So on the NIL side, I mean, he you know he talked about it with me that yeah, I mean that's obviously a big part of it. I, I to me, uh, what it kind of what I sensed from him, he didn't say this, but I think the NIL thing kind of opened his eyes to the possibility of coming back that opened the door. I mean, it's a unique situation where you have a a football program in Ann Arbor that just won the big 10 championship yet. I, I feel like if there's the most recognizable athlete on campus is Hunter. Uh, There are plenty of maybe two through X. I don't know what the number is would be football players, but I do think Hunter is the most recognizable player on campus that plus the swelling of nil plus let's face it he's just an interesting engaging dude right like it's one thing if you're a really good player it's another thing that he 
embraces this. He enjoys this. He wants to be a part of, you know, the campus life. He wants to be out in the open. He, he, you know, he's very good in interview settings in, you know, in just talking to somebody, you know, out walking campus somewhere. Like this is something he embraces. So, you know, I, I do think NIL probably started making him really think about the possibility of coming back for a third season and then everything else, a chance to graduate. There's that competitive side of him of, you know, I, I think he really wants to play in a final four. I mean, obviously mm-hmm. a lot of people, a lot of people do, right. But, mm-hmm. but it's realistic here and Michigan has been right on the doorstep, especially two years ago. And obviously last year, you know, I, we were all thinking that Michigan had a real chance in, against Villanova. And, you know, once you get to the second weekend, shoot, who knows? Uh, so I, I think there's obviously a real significant aspect competitively. In terms of what he needs to improve on, to me, I think, you know, he, he did struggle a little bit down the stretch shooting from beyond the arc. Uh, he talked about with me about trying to develop more of a mid-range game. You know, I, I think where, you know, we're, we see this a lot in sports where, you know, Sometimes when you zig, when everyone else is zagging, you can kind of, you can find a a niche for yourself. You know, the NBA right now is, is dunks, layups, and three pointers. But if you can be, if you can find a way to be efficient in the middle of that somewhere, uh, then you have a chance to unlock something that other teams just aren't doing, aren't scouting for, aren't concerned with. Um, And he set, you know, he set the goal with me of saying, Hey, I want to shoot 35% from three next year. That, that's what he said his floor is his goal. Uh, he also said two and a half blocks a game. That is aggressive. I love it. That'd be awesome. Um, but, you know, I think 35% plus is realistic. Um, defensively, I think you can always, you know, show strides, and, and you need to show that when you're seven foot two. Um, but, you know, I, I think – I think there were a lot of things that we saw from him that were improvements from freshman to sophomore year. Would, would that have made a huge difference in where he was graded in the draft process, you know, this time last year versus this year, who knows? Um, But if he can take that to the next level in some of those categories, uh, then, then he's got a real chance. Listen, I, I think a seven foot plus center that plays the game like he does a lot of times back to the basket, that was that was a money lottery pick 15 years ago. That's probably never going to be the case. But I do think there is a a role and an opportunity for him at the next level. Uh, I just think he can kind of take it a little bit slower than, than a lot of guys because of his unique status on campus and the fact that. I mean, let's face it. I, I don't. What what will one year do for Hunter this year that would you know cause teams to say, oh well, he. He went back for another season. I, I don't know. Like, I, I don't think there really is a whole lot of that. Now, if he comes back and has a terrible season, sure, like that's one thing. But I don't I don't think any of us expect that. I, you know, I think it's fair to expect him to be one of the best players in college basketball. So um, long story short, I think his his draft situation is probably pretty static. Uh, so why not come back for another season? <clears throat> All right. So if he does come back, indeed, as one of the best players in college basketball, we've talked about what that means for him and uh, the uh, import for the future. What does it mean for Michigan? Does this make Michigan an instant contender for the Big Ten title, uh, a serious contender for that uh, six straight uh, Sweet 16 and beyond? Oh, I definitely think so. I mean, the reality is, you know, you, you still got what uh, quadruple digits in the portal. Um, y- who knows how that's all going to shake out? Uh, obviously, there's still plenty of NBA draft decisions that have to be made uh, throughout college hoops and, and obviously in the Big Ten. Um, but, you know, when you look at the guys who you are fairly confident in being on this roster next year, plus the recruiting class that comes in, uh, you know, to me, I think, you know, it'd be hard pressed to find a roster you feel better about than Michigan's at this stage, right? And that's even if, you know, with, with Musa and Caleb uh, testing the waters, you know, let's split the difference, right? Say one of the two comes back, one of the two goes to the NBA. Who knows? Um, I mean, that's, that's a pretty formidable roster, right? I mean, there's, there's some real talent there. And, and I do think, that getting Hunter back adds that leadership, that experience that the Michigan will be lacking without an Eli Brooks coming back. 
Um, but you know, there, there's a lot of potential to fulfill that from within. Um, and also from a, from a production standpoint to, you know, potentially, you know, obviously Michigan's always going to be active on the portal. Uh, they're always going to be a really intriguing fit for various players. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't know of a team that I would definitely say, oh yeah, like that, you know, that team is, is definitely got a better roster right now than Michigan. Even if you, even if you're, uh, you know, you're optimistic about what you think they get back. Um, now we said that last year, you know, Michigan was preseason top 10, so stuff can change, but, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, when you've got a, a player as good as that and as important to the program as he is coming back, plus some, some other real players who I think can take that next step of Frankie Collins, a Terrence Williams, the second, again, say one of the two, you know, potential sophomores in Houston or Diabate come back. I, I mean, it's the puzzle fits pretty well together. If you ask me. You anticipated my next question in terms of uh, Diabate and Houston. Do you have any sort of a gut feel? We know they haven't been showing up on NBA draft boards, but they want to go through the process, and that's fine. That's probably uh, a smart move on their part at this point. Do do you have a gut feel at all as to whether or not uh, one or both will be back? Well, I'll say this. Uh, My gut told me all last spring and early summer that Hunter was going to come back and it was going to be a pretty easy thing. And then, you know, he was point blank being like, yeah, I almost left. So Mm. it's tough for me to gauge. I will say because Hunter Dickinson is back, you wonder if that might incur. And this is total speculation on my end, but you know, does that maybe entice Musa a little bit more, you know, to be a little bit more interested in going Uh, to me, I think based on the complexion of the roster, that we see right now, um, I think Caleb Houston probably has more to gain by returning in terms of draft stock. Mm-hmm. Whereas I think Musa Diabate, you know, I mean, he, we all know the potential. We all know the big time plays he can make, what mm-hmm. he did in, in some games like the the road win at Iowa, stuff like that. But, you know, I, I'd be surprised if in 12 months he would go from kind of a toolsy, you know, up and down player to this really refined, like you totally understand what you're getting. You know, Musa probably of, of, of those two and Hunter Dickinson, like he's probably got the highest upside, but the range is a lot wider for him than, than the other two. Uh, so to me, I think Caleb probably has more to gain in draft stock. Whereas Musa, based on the fact Hunter's coming back, um, I think there might not be as much room for him to grow. And, and maybe he just says, Hey, you know, I want to, I want to get in there now. And yeah, I'll probably have to play some in the G league and, and it's going to take a little bit of time, but you know, I can absolutely see a team fall in love with the, you know, with the makeup, with the skill set, with the the body frame and with the potential. I mean, you know, when that dude's at, when that dude's at the peak of his powers, um, you know, physically, he's probably going to be 50 plus pounds heavier than he was last season. So there's, there's a ways to go for him in that regard, but yeah, that that's all just kind of me gauging it and seeing what, you know, what's out there. I mean, if Houston comes back, I think he's preseason all big 10 type of a guy. If Musa comes back, I think he's got that potential, but I, I don't know if he'll have, you know, the same types of opportunities that would be available to him because a guy like Hunter came back. Gotcha. So those two automatically uh, factor in as X factors for this team, whether they're here, whether they're not. The biggest X factor to me that I know is returning is one Frankie Collins, because you saw flashes of, I I mean, I I say uh, to people, Ricky Green from back in the mid 70s as as one of the quickest, fastest guards that uh, Michigan has ever put on the floor, but uh, he came in as a as a transfer, as a junior, and uh, Frankie Collins entering uh, this next season has some things to work on. There's no question about that. Uh, your estimation on how much better and how much different you think we will see uh, Frankie Collins be in this coming year. If we could copy paste some of the stretches he had in the NCAA tournament, I'm good, right? Like, <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. Uh, I, 
I knew that that was where Frankie could get, but the way he played for the vast majority of, of his opportunities in the NCAA tournament, I didn't expect it for him this past season. Um, what he showed was that he could blend that incredible speed athleticism that you're talking about with fluidity, basketball IQ, understanding when to really turn on the jets and when to lay back. Um, and you consider the fact that, you know, Hunter's going to be there and he is a stabilizing force and he's kind of a natural type of a player because you have to feed it into him. Um, yeah, I mean, he, I always knew that the ceiling was pretty high for him, but boy, the floor that he showed by what he did late last season gives me a lot of hope that he can take that, that point guard spot and that starting point guard spot and run with it. Now, you know, it's, it's still a small sample size. He still has to improve as a shooter. The free throw um, line has to be better. Um, but, you know, we saw him gain some confidence, gain some pro productivity uh, as, a, as a jump shooter, as a scorer. Um, you know, and I, I think he probably tried to do a little bit too much at times when he had those, you know, what, six to ten minute stretches in games. When, when you give him the vast majority of the minutes – I think he kind of lets the game come to him. So 100% totally with you. I think what he has the potential to do is really exciting. But I think, you know, the the median Frankie Collins game, that would have probably worried me a little bit had the season ended, you know, after the Ohio State road win. But because of what we saw after that, um, I feel like the median of what the – just the common expectation of, hey, Frankie played well, he played fine. Uh, to me, that – was enhanced so much by what we saw down the stretch. Gotcha. And one, well, one caution to all of you more mature uh, Michigan fans who may be tapping out your emails right now. Uh, I did not say that uh, Frankie Collins is going to be the next Ricky Green. I said I saw little flashes in what he does that uh, that reminds me of uh, of the great Ricky Green and in, in terms of his speed and quickness. I just want to make that perfectly clear. Good save, uh, John. Good save. Yeah, you're good. You're fine. Everything will be all right. All right. Who, who's, good. Who's, well, the who, who's the next Glenn Rice? Who is the next Glenn? <laughs> no, not touching that one. The, yeah, the next guy that uh, outscores him in a six-game stretch in the NCAA tournament. There. Still waiting. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so I want to, before I let you go, a quick hard shift here because, uh, football now is done. Spring practice is done. And, uh, this is a team that uh, has all sorts of excitement on the offensive side of the football. Uh, just most people look at it and say that they are absolutely going to be loaded defensively. You've got some, uh, Definitely some growing up to do, some replacing of uh, key personnel, uh, all of that. But you've got a schedule also that is pretty manageable at the start and allows for some growth. You tell me as uh, you've talked to people and as you've um, watched this program coming out of spring and into the summer period, where do you think Michigan football is at in terms of how good it has a chance to be and whether it has a chance to uh, uh, be a back-to-back -back Big Ten champion kind of team. Yeah, I think, you know, obviously defensively is where there's there's probably the widest range of potential outcomes. And, you know, it, it's interesting because you think back to, to how we were looking at this team going into last season, it, it always felt like this team was going to go based on their stars defensively. And at the time, I think the only two players that we, we felt confident in in knowing were stars were Aiden Hutchinson and Dax Hill. Now, obviously, plenty of others emerged throughout the course of the season. I think, I think there's probably more, um, there's more understanding and confidence in like players three through 11 on the Michigan defense. But who, I don't think there are two guys who you go into this season defensively and say, oh, yeah, you know, if they, if they have their typical seasons, their first-round selections in next year's draft. I mean, 
Hutchinson and Dax Hill were were toward the back end of the first round around this time. We knew, you know, when those crazy people are throwing out mock drafts one year in advance, it's kind of where those guys were. Uh, so for me, who can develop into being a real star? Um, can develop into that. I I think the depth. I feel a little bit better about the depth at this point than I did in April of 2021 you know, defender three through 11 in that starting group. Uh, Offensively, totally agree. I I mean, I think what's cool is if you just talk about the players who played from week two on for Michigan's offense, it's a really good group. But you have Ronnie Bell coming back. I think that's that's a luxury and that is a reality that I don't think people are truly going to be able to understand and, and measure until we see him back out on the field. Uh, so to me, that's such a, that's such a benefit to this team, but you know, the speed, the skill, I, I think two things can be true at the same time. I'm going to miss Hassan Haskins like crazy. And man, I'm super excited about what Michigan has as, as a running back group. I mean, the Corum Edwards duo, Tavi Dunlop can, can, I mean, if he's your three, you feel really good. Uh, there's some, there, you know, there's some young guys even behind them that, you know, that have a chance to do some things, uh, you know, I, I, and Hey, Sharon Moore offensive line. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta replace a little bit. I mean, I got full confidence. You saw last year when Michigan had to battle some injuries and shuffled in like four guards at once, uh, what was at the Nebraska game or whatever. I mean, it, you know, it, it's that. Michigan might have to, you know, get into some uh, an extra shootout here or there compared to last season. But yeah, I mean this this is a top this is a preseason top ten team. You know, depends on if people are really you know really optimistic and to say preseason top five, or it's a team that's right below that. But I mean, I think Michigan fans can and should expect this team to contend for the big prizes again. Um, and you know, there's still going to be a lot of people who are going to assume that Ohio state's going to get the revenge and win that game. Hey, you got 11 weeks to figure all that out. Um, this team beat Ohio state last year. This team won the big 10 and this team returned. Pl- they returned plenty of players that give them a chance to do it again. Does that guarantee anything? No, but you can absolutely, and you should absolutely expect big prizes and big contention from this team. And, and, you know, I think on paper, the roster shows that. No doubt about it. And the reason that uh, Sharon Moore is smiling so big these days is that uh, he's got 60% of a starting line coming back that was voted best in the nation last year. And he has the luxury of plugging in a Remington Award finalist uh, at center. So, um, yeah, you, that's a quick fix in in my mind. So, uh, Brian Bush always great you you show your versatility today switching from the the court to the field with uh great aplomb we appreciate you and uh we will do this again soon my friend aplomb what a great word thanks john <laughs>